Why, hello there. Brent here, the Bring Your Own Tools. On today's episode, we are doing an amazing, beautiful, stick-on tile accent wall with floating bench and shelf. If you want to do it, keep on watching. Let's get started. There are two main elements on this project, the accent wall and the bench and shelf. And on this one, we're gonna be starting with the bench and shelf. This is a beautiful Western red cedar. And these two slabs came from a salvation yard that it picked up for a couple hundred bucks. They're gorgeous. They just need to be planed down and sanded properly prior to install. So let's get to that and then we can get to install. Now these slabs are quite flat, so I don't actually have to plane these down, but to make life a little bit easier on myself, I do put it through my router planing system to get a nice even surface on two sides for both of these slabs. And if you don't have a router set up like this, I assure you, you don't need it. It's just gonna take you a bit more time to get this thing fully sanded down. Now I do love a good slab restoration project, so if you are looking for slabs like this, I'll make sure and leave a link to a couple of my favorite salvage yards as well as my favorite slab yard. Once I have both slabs planed down properly, I do notice that I have a few large cracks running down the center on both slabs, and therefore I do take a bit of fast setting epoxy by Total Boat, fill those cracks and crevices up, and therefore it will actually stabilize those cracks very nicely, which means they won't be a weak point within our slab once installed. I let the epoxy dry overnight and I come back to start my sanding process. I'm starting from 80 grit and going all the way up to 220. My main sanding pass is just to remove any of the router lines that were left from the planing. As for the sanding grits, I'm going from 80 to 100 to 150 to 220 on the top, bottom, and the live edge front lip, as you can see right there. The sides and the back side don't have to be sanded at this point because we're going to be cutting it to size once we get on site. This Bosch Random Orbital Sander does do an amazing job on all of these surfaces, but I always highly suggest taking a soft sanding pad with some sandpaper and sanding all of the areas where it has a unique shape because it does an amazing job at getting into those tight-knit crevices that a Random Orbital Sander just is not able to. Once we have both of these slabs fully sanded down, I want to make sure we determine the exact dimensions that we're going to need prior to finishing, which is why we need to start installing our hardware. If you're an avid BYOT follower, you know how much I love a laser level because it gives you true level and it makes life so much easier. So after we determine the exact placement of where we want our height to be for our bench, I then figure out exactly where all of our stud placements are with a stud finder. Finding your stud locations at this point is very important because you want to make sure that we're evenly distributing the weight of this bench across as many studs as possible, which will provide the most secure holding strength for our bracket system. And for our bracket system, we're going with eighth inch thick L-metal. This is an extremely strong, durable steel, and this means that we're gonna have a tremendous amount of strength. I'm easily able to cut it to length with my angle grinder and a metal cutting blade. Once I determine the length, I do mark a 45 degree angle on both sides and cut off one tab and only one tab on each side because we're going to have mitered corners between the transition of the back bracket to the side brackets. On the side that's attached to the wall, I drill half inch holes at every single location where there's going to be a stud. However, on the lower area where it's going to be holding up the shelf, I drill quarter inch holes on the ends as well as every other foot. Once all of our holes are taken care of, I do realize that you will be able to see the fasteners on the bottom of our shelf. Therefore, I take a countersink drill bit that's specifically designed for metal and make sure that those are properly recessed in order for our screws to lay flush. However, I'm not doing this to the side that we're gonna be attaching to the wall because I want as much meat on this as possible and a larger screw with a somewhat flat head is all we need for this application. 
Once I fasten both sides of our bracket, I know it's perfectly level because of our laser level, and I secure the remaining fasteners. I also secure our side brackets, which I cut exactly how I did the back bracket. As for our shelf bracket system, you can cut it and drill it exactly the way we did our first row. However, I didn't use a miter technique in this case because I wanted a more seamless look that looked better in the end. Therefore, I just cut a small square out of one corner on each side of the bracket, and therefore it perfectly fits snugly into place as long as you obviously cut it to the correct length. I fastened both side brackets down for our shelf, and luckily for us, this is all we need for our bracket systems. Now if you wanted to, you could just install your bench and shelf at this point, but we really want to dress up this entryway, and therefore we are going to be prepping the surface for our stick-on tile accent wall. But the one thing you need to think about when installing this type of accent wall is to really prep the surface so this adhesion can stick properly. I take 100 grit sandpaper and sand over all of the wall surfaces multiple times and then come back with a solution of TSP and water to wipe down any of the loose dust and debris that was made from the sanding or any grease that has been on there for potentially years. This is a really important step to have proper adhesion between our tile and the wall surface, so don't skip this one, even if you think the tile is sticky enough. As we wait for our boards to dry, it's now time for our accent wall. For that, we are using these already prefabricated accent wall tiles from Tic Tac Tile. Now, this is really nice because of the fact that it has a nice, quality finish on the front, but it actually has a foam backer with an adhesive back to that. That means we can just peel and stick and do this extremely quickly and easily. The first thing is first, we need to figure out if this base is actually level. So I have our laser level set up over here, and as you can see, height-wise, we're good over here, but if you take this and maneuver it this direction, you will see that we have quite a significant difference. It's about a half inch. So we need to figure out how to make sure we have this entire row perfectly level, which won't be that hard. And when I say not hard, it really isn't because all you have to do is take two pieces of tape and line up that first tile with our laser level. Once that's in line and we know that that's level, then I take a Sharpie with a large washer and run that at the very bottom of the tile. That will give us a specific line to cut to. Now, because we're starting with the high side, that means this is the smallest amount that we'll be cutting off. But as we get towards the low side, that means we're gonna be cutting off more, which inevitably will mean that this whole row will be perfectly level as long as we have that very top of the board aligned with our laser level prior to making our Sharpie mark. And when it says peel and stick, it really means peel and stick. That's all you need to do peel off that film, stick it in place, and I actually use this hard rubber roller that's specifically designed to apply even pressure on multiple different types of surfaces. I grab my washer and Sharpie again, make a line across our panel, cut it and place it. As easy as that, but just from time to time, make sure you double check your levelness, especially on this bottom row because everything is gonna be working off of this row. As for cutting this material, it's extremely easy. You can even use scissors, but in my case, in my personal preference, I suggest using your standard utility knife because that will provide a nice crisp line all the way down while also allowing you to use a level as a guide in order to have a perfect line all the way across. As we start our second row, I do suggest using a staggered pattern, and in this case, we're using a staggered plank wall pattern because our second row will end at the center of the row below it. But once we have that taken care of, we can finally place a full tile without any cuts, finally. But then we run into the bracket 
Yep, we do have to cut around every single bracket, but luckily for us, we can give ourselves a bit of wiggle room around these brackets due to the fact that our slab is larger than the bracket itself. Tic Tac Tiles calls this out as their Renault board collection, and this color specifically is light concrete gray. It's a really nice color in my personal opinion because it gives that modern look without being too flashy, just provides a really nice, beautiful look and texture to the wall without doing a full renovation. Peel and Stick is definitely a nice alternative compared to some of the accent walls that I've done on this channel already. Obviously, a peel and stick application is something that any DIYer can take on at any level. As we work our way up off the floor and away from the bottom bracket, it really goes extremely quickly and smoothly at this point because nothing's in the way. Just making sure that you're double checking the levelness every once in a while, firmly rolling it on securely, and working your way up to the next row. And obviously the large spans are a lot funner than the small tight knit areas that you will come across eventually. Another way I've found our laser level to be very useful is to actually line up our seams. This provides you with a very accurate measurement and can help you on multiple rows as you continuously go up the wall. However, as I worked my way up the wall, I did realize that I didn't quite measure out this bracket to the correct height due to the fact that we had to cut the very bottom row. So think about that next time, especially if you don't want to have a small little channel like this on your project. But we of course made it work, and if it does come loose, we can always spray a little contact adhesive spray in there in order to have it bond more securely since it's such a small section. As I make my way up to the very top row, I do want to emphasize that it doesn't have to be extremely tight at the very top. You do want to have a bit of space between the ceiling and the top of your tile. And the way that I combat this with a nice clean finish is I actually come back with some caulk and fill in that small gap between the two. As I make my way to the second wall, the only thing that I have to tell you on this one is the fact that this product is easily able to maneuver around outlets and light switches, which is really beneficial, especially to have a nice seamless look in the end. At this point in time, I do want to say a big, huge, special thank you to Tic Tac Tiles for sponsoring this week's video. They personally reached out to me and provided all the product for this project. And the fact that this product is 100% waterproof, very resilient, and very DIY friendly means it's a win-win-win in my book. And if you want to check out this product or any other of their amazing product lineups to choose from, I'll make sure and leave a link in the description box below. Now, getting back to the project at hand, because we have an outside corner right here, I grab a piece of J trim, position this right on the edge. Therefore, you have a really nice even seam across the drywall as well as our reno board. But once we have that in place, I grab some white caulk and fill in any crevices along this piece of trim around the base to tile as well as ceiling to tile locations. But as we wait for our caulk to dry, it's now time to cut, finish, and install our slabs. I cut the back of each slab to give us a nice crisp line, as well as cutting any excess on these boards. I always suggest cutting a little bit long because you can't come back from cutting too short. Just give yourself a little bit of space before you get these beautiful boards in place. One thing I had to think about ahead of time is the fact that the L-Metal is actually ovaled slightly in the very inside corner. Therefore, all I had to do to make sure I had a perfect fit was to take a round over bit with my router and just round over all the edges where the slab is going to meet our bracket. That will take care of any issue of these boards not laying flush against our bracket. Now that we have these boards cut to the correct length as well as rounded over, I do grab my sander and go over it once more with 220 grit sandpaper, then take some mineral spirits and clean off any of the loose debris that's left on it. However, the mineral spirits will only get so much, so I do go back with a tack cloth and remove any of the excess sawdust that the mineral spirits didn't grab. Once that's taken care of, it's now time for finish, and for most projects of mine, I do love myself some Satin Armor Seal Finish by General Finishes. 
I apply a heavy coat with a foam brush to the entire bottom side first and then work my way to the top. With this finish, you do want it to soak in for approximately five to 10 minutes and then wipe off any excess. And I do want to make sure that you wipe off any of the excess and let it dry thoroughly before applying a second coat. I did apply two coats to this product because this wood was really dry and needed multiple coats. But now that I have multiple coats applied to each board and wiped off any of the excess, I decided to start installation right away because these things can dry in place. Once I like the positioning of the shelf and bench, I secure them in place with black deck screws. Now these deck screws I'm using mainly because one, they are black, and two, they actually have a flat head with a star drive which fits perfectly for the holes that we pre-drilled. Because they were pre-drilled, they were very easy to install, and all we have to do is reinstall our outlet cover plate, and guess what? We are done! I do love myself a beautiful transformation, especially when you first walk into a home. And this setting is truly magnificent compared to what it was originally. There's so much character, so much beauty within the tiles, as well as the complement to this live edge slab bench and shelf that as you can see, is very comfortable and strong. And that's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah.